G'day, welcome to Market Sam After Work. Today I want to do another video on bullet stability. Um, and listen, I've done several videos. I won't go too through, too, through the details too much. If you would like to know more about the basics of it, then go into the search feature in our channel and type in twist. You'll find that there's another four or five, I think it's four videos that go through different parts of this same conversation, which explain the basics of it with how to work out twist and what twist about and the, the base bits and pieces. Gyroscopic force is what we're talking about to make a projectile travel through the air. So this is actually just about some of the nuances that go with that and a little bit more of the understanding of it. Um, basically out of conversations I've had with people and, and realized that the, 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 the basic understanding of what it's all about is not quite what it's all about. So let me go through and explain that. Um, I suppose the fundamentals of it when it comes to using the twist to make the bullet spin, to make it stable through the air, is to try and compensate for the fact that the bullet, the normal modern and efficient bullet isn't very good at traveling through the air. And I'll, cor I'll correct that comment to meaning what it really means in, in just a minute, but I'll start with something that is designed to travel through the air quite well is what we've got here, a dart. Um, now a dart has a heavy front, pointy heavy front and a tail. So it has drag on the back of it. That means that it ends up with a center of pressure that is behind the center of gravity. So the nature of something, it wants to travel in that fashion. It wants its heavy end first, it's light but dra heavy drag air. So the, what drags something that actually like an anchor hanging behind it is what it wants to make it stay traveling that way. Um, if you throw a dart that way, um, then it's gonna end up swapping around and going that way because of that same feature. A bullet, on the other hand, it, drag is really across itself. It doesn't want drag to start off with. Drag, as much as that makes something tri travel um, s stably through the air, it also slows things down very quickly. So you don't want drag if you want the bullet to be the, as good as it could be for doing its job. You don't want drag. You want the minimum drag you can get. Um, and then you also want it to be as pointy and as smooth shaped on the front so it'll push through the air with as little resistance that the, as you can simply imagine, if you have angles that are really blunt, they don't push through the air very well. If you tighten it up, then they manage to part through the air really nicely. What that does, if we look at a bullet, is it turns into where simply by the shape of it, it's lighter in the front than it is in the back. So by the nature of a bullet, it wants to travel that way. That's the way that it wants to, that physic wants it to travel but this is the way we want it to travel. We want it to go forward so it goes through the air as efficiently as possible. We also want the shape of the back, on the, the shape of the back of it so it gets pushed nicest by the, by the, um, the airflow. There's all sorts of, or by the blast or the expansion of gases to get it out of the barrel. There's all those sort of details. But the nature of things is we want that, we want that pointy end, but that actually fights us on a physics thing in the fashion of the, the bullet wants to swap around as it travels through the air. The way we answer that is with twist. So we have a thread or the rifling inside the barrel and we, as we force it out, it turns into a, a very fast RPM up to nearly 300,000 RPM, but generally somewhere between 100 and 200,000 RPM is what we're talking about for the average bullet is the speed of the bullet. The other um, paradox we have there is that um, especially or particularly with the likes of a lead core bullet, which is a very smart bullet, has soft, more malleable metal on the inside, but very heavy metal on the inside, a jacket on the outside. So it seals to the ball really nicely. It carries good energy out to target. It creates a very strong spin out of its weight and that side of things. But it also, if you spin it too fast, that that malleable metal inside will push out, expand and change the shape of the projectile or even explode the projectile in some cases. Just simply through the fact that that centrifugal force is so much that'll tear the ball apart. Um, so you can only go so fast with your spin. So this, this lies into, I suppose, a little more of the understanding of what we're actually talking about. Um, you have boundaries of you want the right sort of shapes, you, the, the, the more efficient your shape, the better it travels through the air, um, but you um, have the more you go down that shape, the more you end up with a thin pointy front and a heavy back, the more you're pushing the boundaries on the physics and it wants to swap around. 
and I'll get into why that matters more in a minute. Um, and then you also have limitations. With the likes of monolithic bullet, um, it's okay, we can go with monolithic, that stops the exploding, they're not gonna blow apart that type of thing, but they don't carry the same weight. They're not as heavy and they don't work as well. They're, they're more rigid, they don't seal to the bore as well. It's not all benefit when you go down the monolithic pass, although that it does fix some of those features. Um, so basically, you've all, you're always running with the best compromise you can come up with. Now, understanding it a little bit more is just something what I'm trying to do here. And I suppose that the general rule of thumb is that people have figured out is that the, the smaller a bullet, the more twist it needs. And the, in the way of the smaller the caliber or the smaller the diameter of the bullet, the more twist it needs. Um, which will generally be how you buy your projectiles and you know that, but you'll have made sense of that by looking at it. Um, and then the heavier a bullet is, the more twist it needs. Um, the, those are very, very rudimentary, very crude ways of looking at things, but I'll explain them a little bit further. The smaller, the more, twi the more twist, the more, which is the more RPM it needs, is, is simply through the fact that the smaller the diameter of something, the less gyroscopic force it can create at an RPM. It's simply a mass thing. It's a, a, a mass, it's not maths, but maths thing. So it's the weight of it. Um, and the larger the diameter the weight's at, like a flywheel, the bigger it is, the more force it creates. So that's the simple thing. Small bullets, small bullets need more spin. Um, bigger caliber bullets need less spin. The weight thing, well, that is a more a circumstance of um, coincidence than it is of reality. Um, the, what it's actually talking about is the length, and even that's not quite true. But the simple bit is something that's longer, um, can generally needs more twist. What we're actually talking about there is this out of balance thing. The further away our center of gravity gets from our center of pressure. So the further away that we get from, there's a, there's a pressure point, which is the center of that. Um, and the more the weight ends up behind that, the more, it want, more leverage it has to flick forward. And I suppose the bit that I'm actually getting to this conversation is, is two things, probably two sets of bullets move into what is that conversation. I haven't quite got the best example on these two here, but these are both um, 500 grand projectiles. And this is solid copper and this is solid lead. Painted or coated lead, but solid lead. Um, this one here, as you can clearly see, has a, it's still a flat base. It's not too much different down the back. It's, it's longer for sure, so that's a bit of a side effect and I don't have something to show in a, in a more equal example. But the weight's about the same. But what the deal is actually is it's obviously a lot thinner in the front. So it's a lot more unbalanced. This projectile here from what I figured out is going to need around a one in 10 twist, maybe a one in 12, but a one in 10 twist roughly somewhere in there is what it's gonna to need to stabilize. This here, and this comes into the, the people that don't understand when they look at like a 4570 shooting a 500 gram projectile, uh, and it's only got a, some of those have only got a one in 18 twist. How, how could they possibly do that? Or a one in 15 twist, how could they possibly do that? Doesn't make any sense of all the things. Heavier needs more twist. The thing is, when you look at an old style projectile like this, and this is still fairly round nose compared to what some of them were, is that they are very center, their center of gravity is very much the center of the bullet. So even though there will be a little bit more the center of pressure will be a little bit further forward. Um, the center of gravity isn't that far behind the center of pressure. So they don't need a lot of RPM to keep them traveling straight through there. It's why a 4570 could shoot and there is military records of them shooting over two miles with a 4570 with I think it was a 550 gram projectile and they were volley firing but they were still getting out there in a stable form because the bullet stays in that form. And it doesn't make sense to everyone. How can it possibly be? It's because they're a fairly well center of gravity bullet, as simple as that. A bullet that's not too much different, but has a real point at the front of it. So it really tapers off. It moves its seven center of gravity rearward, and then it needs all that twist. Then it comes into a twist, which is what our modern um, projectile shapes and our very efficient projectile shapes are all about. They're all about getting through the air better, but they sacrifice their inherent stability to do that 
and we fix it with RPM, with the spin, and that's where the spin comes into it. And this also comes into a conversation of a couple of bullets I've got here. I don't have the particular offender, but and I, it's, a, it's a story from a long time ago, and in truth, I read about it 15 years ago, I suppose, maybe it was only 13 years ago, but a lot of years ago, when I first went to load up my, my 308 to go and shoot at over a mile, and I went to, or well, I think it was 1500 yards was the first thing I was gonna shoot. I had a one in 12 twist in a Remington 700, and I wanted to, was planning on shooting out past a mile, but I wanted to start at 1500 yards is what I was setting up a load to go and do. And I had done a lot of reading and found that there was this, 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 this transonic zone that was gonna be a big issue to deal with and that people had gone with a, there was a 168 grain Sierra Match King that was renowned for tumbling just on a thousand yard range or just before the thousand yards with all the mass that was just slowing down, just hitting the transonic zone just as it went through there. Um, and it was the actual going through the transonic zone was causing them to open up and tumble and all sorts of weird things is what was going on. And the logic then was to go with 175 grain projectile. It was either go with 155 grain projectile, which meant that it hadn't gone transonic at that point, or to go with 175 grain, which means that it was already gone and it had restabilized after that. So I didn't think too much more of that. I went with 175 grain burger. It was probably my start of going down the burger path. Bullet performed fine, and I've actually shot it out past 2,000 yards. That same bullet, that same load, done all the same bits and pieces. Found it was really consistent. Um, and then I carried on, and I found that transonic zone issues or bullet stability issues to do with the transonic zone was just not something I had problems with. Knew about it, knew what people had spoken about it, but largely started to come to the understanding, okay, it wasn't largely what people were talking about. A lot of it was excuse for not understanding conditions and how weird it gets when you shoot extreme long ranges. Um, but there still, there is places where I've banged back into it. Um, here is probably a classic example. I'll zoom in a bit closer so you can see this, but this is a classic example of the problem in a different format. Two very similar looking projectiles. One is the 175 grain burger. The other is a Sierra tipped match king with a green tip on it. That's 168 grain Sierra Gang King. That's 175 grain um, Berger long range boat tail, hollow point long range boat tail. Um, the, the bit that goes, I suppose that I'd point out with this is that that Match King will struggle with a one in 12 twist. It's much happier in a one in 10 twist. It'll still get there. I tried to use it in a 30-30, uh, which I think is only a one in 12 twist as well. Um, and it wasn't quite getting the speed and they were definitely tumbling. They were, they were having the problem. Um, they just couldn't do it out past really on, on that 30-30 with a hot load and that sort of stuff. It was still not able to get past a thousand yards without being extremely erratic. Um, that 175 grain doesn't have any problems. It doesn't have that issue. In a closer analysis of the Sierra Match King, we're pushing the boundaries on getting better speed. So they were a more efficient bullet that worked really, really well, really nicely shaped to get the best efficiency, but the center of gravity had really moved back too far. And the 175 grain burger wasn't a burger doing a better thing in, and in my thoughts of what they actually did there, or maybe there was some, I'm not gonna try and get into one's better than the other. What I was saying, what I wanted to say was the center of gravity was a little bit further forward. Still an efficient bullet, worked very nicely, but it didn't have that issue. So it's actually one of the things when I talk about, as I have mentioned, that a inherently a, a bullet with a stability problem, that's what we're actually talking about. It's not necessarily a bad design by any means. It's just not designed to go past the transonic zone is probably what you would say. It is about, not just about the tip. It's not just about the, the weight. It's not just about the length. It is about that seventh center of gravity. You push things a little bit further forward in the shape. Um, well, listen, listen, I won't try and get into trying to explain shape with words, but you basically end up with that center of gravity is just far enough forward and it's not to the front. It's just far enough forward to keep them inherently more stable than 
they don't struggle, they don't need as much spin to stabilize them, and they don't have a huge issue of going through your transonic zone. So anyway, listen, that's about the, that's that bit of it. As said, there's lots more videos on the channel to explain other details to go with this. Um, this is just more into the, the paradox or the, 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 the elephant that's in the room as to why some do, some don't. It really comes down to that center of gravity and us using centrifugal force to make something do that it inherently doesn't want to do. And yet it does it so reliably and so consistently as long as you stay inside the mathematical brackets it's working with. And without overthinking it, if you follow the manufacturer's instructions, it works just fine. Um, and if you're going outside those boundaries, well, this is some of the information to help you understand why things are doing what they're doing. No, no magic, no, no hidden, it's not done with mirrors and things like that. It's actually done with logic. Um, and yeah, you don't need to get too mathematical to understand it. Um, trial and error gets you there too. But this is actually the ingredients of what's going on. Anyway, guys, thank you very much for checking in. Hope you liked the video. We'll catch you next time.